Welcome back everybody, it's Tom with Charlie's Props. Today we're going to talk about all these different kind of pixels. We've got four distinct different types of pixels, some old, some new. Let's get to it. Alright, we've got four different types of pixels right here in front of me. And first and foremost, I'm going to talk a little bit about our props. We always try to make our props 50 pixel der derivative, that way 50 pixels or 100 pixel strings. These are all, each of these groups are 100 pixels, but we always try to make our props 50 pixel derivative. And almost always we have pixel number one and the last pixel directly next to each other at the end of the prop. There's a couple variances there, like some arches where it would make sense to have them next to each other. But we do that so that you have easier capabilities for power balancing and power injection. Now that's gonna be pretty important for some of these. Now for each of these different pixels, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each. And there are advantages and disadvantages to each and every one of these. I'm going to stand here and be a little bit blasphemous and say that none of these are better than the others. So we're going to start on the left and move our way over. We're going to first talk a little bit about what happens when you hook up your extension cords and when you hook them up. So regardless if you're 5 volt or 12 volt, it doesn't matter. What happens is as power runs through your extension cord and as it runs through any of these cables and as they get the, the lights use power up, that voltage starts to drop. Now that's going to be really important to note because these are 5 volt pixels that are native 5 volt. These pixels are 12 volt, but they're not native 12 volt. The components in them are actually 5 volt, which gives them a huge advantage. These are 12 volt native and these are 12 volt native. Now which pixels do we have in front of me right here? These are 5 volt 2011 pixels from Rexton. Awesome, and if they're true Rexton, they're extremely reliable. These have been the most reliable pixels in my personal show. Next up are uh, 12 volt bull bullets. These ones in particular are from Wally's. I've had Matto's Designs pixels, I've had Wally's, I've had your pixel store. All of them are extremely reliable. When I compare the two of them, Last year I had a tree with 12 volt bullets of about 4,000 pixels. I had two failures to fix. That's really good. Two pixels out of 4,000 in an entire season. For Rexons on the other hand, I had 15,000 and I only had one failure. So when I say they're extremely reliable, I mean it. Next up we've got 12 volt Evo pixels. These are the new, um, newly designed pixels from Matto's Designs. And they're pretty awesome. A little bit different. They work a little bit different, but they do have their disadvantages. Next up, we've got, these are from your Pixel Store, but these are basically GS8208 pixels. These are what are called the Duo pixels, and they call that the Duo because they have two data lines. We'll get to that in terms of their advantages and, advantages and disadvantages. Now, we all have heard Mo Volts, Mo Beta. Well, I don't think that's going to apply because the reason Mo Volts, Mo Beta works is because they're always focusing in on these pixels right here that are 12 volts, but they actually function on 5 volts. Now, why does that matter? As that power runs through those extensions and through these wires and through the components, that voltage starts to drop. Well, if you're starting at 12 volts and you start to drop to 11 and a half, 11, 10, 9, 8, even 7 volts, because the components on these boards really only need 5 volts, they can still produce. The colors that you want and need. So let's get to talking about that and why all of that is important. I'm slide these off to the side. Talk about five volt pixels. These are sort of you either love them or you hate them. Now why do you either love them or hate them? Let's talk about the advantages. These take less power than traditional 12 volt bullets do. And we'll get to why. They take less power which means you can run more per PSU and because they're also technically five volt they also take less power. So they take less current, less power at five volts. So you can run more pixels per uh, PSU, which means you need less PSUs if you have a higher pixel count, yada, yada, yada. And another, what I see as another advantage is what happens when these pixels start to fail. So as that voltage starts to drop, you start to get color discoloration and you start to get pixels that just don't work. That's it bad color and they just stop working. Now you might think that well, look at that's bad. Well first of all 
Anybody who's gonna run these more than 50 on a string or so, they really should be doing power balancing and power injecting. So you're already in the mindset that you need to do that. So that's why most people don't like them is they require a lot of extra work in terms of getting the power balancing or power injection set up on these pixels. But because you're already in the mindset of doing that, port packing becomes a lot easier because it doesn't matter if you're talking about pixel number one or pixel number 800, you've already done all the work to get it all set up with all that extra power balancing, power injection. Your colors are gonna look good because you've already done all the extra work. The downside is all the extra work. That's why they've been shunned. So those are the five volt pixels. In a nutshell, they work great, but they take a whole lot of extra work. Next up, we've got these 12 volt bullets. This is what everybody loves. Mo volts, mo better, right? Because you don't have to do all the extra power injection or power balancing on these strings. Me personally, I've run 300, 400 pixels on a 45 foot extension on an F16V3 with no balancing, no injection, no color loss, nothing, no issues. 400 pixels on a 45 foot extension cord. You can't do that with 5 volt at all. You absolutely need power balancing at least every 70 to 80 pixels. If not, I, I do it every 50 because it's got, it's got them. This is why people say Mo Volts, Mo Beta. It's, but it's not because they're 12 volts. It's because these are, they can accept 12 volts, but they actually run on five. And the way that they do that is they're either regulated or resistor pixels. And what that means is effectively it receives a voltage and it steps it down to five volts. And what gets passed along is that 12 volt or as it starts to drop, whatever the voltage is, it passes that voltage along. But physically these start to get a little bit warmer. Now there's been some conjecture and nobody's really willing to say it. There's, there's other reasons possibly for it. But if you put a, a thermal tester against 12 volt pixels, like these versus standard five volt, you're gonna find that these run physically much, much, much warmer because the way that it sheds that extra volts, whether it's 12, 11, 10, that it, it's receiving and works down to five volt is it has to get rid of that energy and it does it through a resistor that actually physically heats up and sheds that, that excess off. So huge advantage of these is you can run a whole lot of pixels with not a whole lot of extra effort and they just work. Now the disadvantages are they're big, they're bulky, they're heavy. The four inch spacing isn't really true four inch spacing. You get about three and a half inch spread, maybe 3.6 inches between hole pole because the pick, the wiring comes out the back like this. And when you actually push them in, you know, they, they sort of split this way. When these start to fail, it's different than five volt. When these start to fail, they don't really lose their color per se. They will flicker and they'll flicker pretty bad. And the other thing that they will do is if there's too much of a current draw, they will actually almost flip a switch and get just stuck on all white. Meaning they get to a certain threshold where they're like, oh, something's not right. And then they just get stuck at all white. And that could be a problem if you planned your show out at 20% and you plan your power supplies out at 20% and all of a sudden now your lights are stuck at all white and the only way to reset them is to either restart your PSU or your, um, or your controller. So the downsides are they act pretty horribly when they, when they start to fail. They fail in, in, in an epic manner in comparison to 5 volt. 5 volt just goes, eh, my color's not so good, or I'm not gonna turn on. These start to flicker, and it's really irritating. You see the posts about them all the time. So that's 12 volt bullets in a nutshell. All right, now these pixels here are the new Evo pixels from Atos Designs. These are very different in their look, their style, their feel. So let's talk first about the huge advantages. This is 100 pixels. It weighs almost nothing. In fact, the ends on them are almost bigger than the pixels themselves. These, is, this is also 100 pixels. The weight savings is immense between these pixels and these. So if you're talking 50 or 100 pixel props, probably not a big deal. But if you're talking some of the props that we designed that have like 900 pixels, over 1400 pixels, 1600 pixels, you're talking a huge weight savings that these Evos have that, that these do not have. Let's also talk about spacing, the huge advantage that these have. Notice that the wire lays flat between the pixels here. 
that means that it doesn't, when you push it in the coil like this, the wire goes up. And that four inch space actually starts on the inside here of the pixel itself. And it has to go up and over to the next pixel. That's why you get about three and a half inches, not the true four inch. These here are much, much, much closer to a true four inch space. You get four inches, almost exactly four inch between the two pixels, which means your whole spacing can actually be almost a true four inch between them. That's a huge plus. Another interesting thing that I found is when I really ramped up the gamma for Halloween colors, the oranges were just such a vibrant orange that I haven't seen in 5 or 12 volt. It might be because they're diffused a little bit different, um, but I will say that the colors on these were really, really fun, a little bit more vibrant than even the colors on the others. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the colors on the others, just Usually at this time of the year, the purples, the dark greens, and the oranges, people ask how to do it with the ramping up the gamma. It still doesn't look quite as much as they love. Super easy. I just selected orange, and they looked orange. That was awesome. Now, they're not perfect. They do have some downsides. The recommendation from Evo is to run 300, 300 pixels um, max, and that you will need power balancing power injection. So, wait a minute. Mo volts, mo beta. I can run four, five, six hundred without any issue on, on these standard 12 volt bullets. You don't get the same thing here until you start adding power injection or power balancing. Now they didn't make the spiker T's that make them easy and with Charlie's props it actually makes it easier because normally pixel number one and the last pixel are next to each other. You just plug one of those in and you've got power on both ends of this. But I, what I am going to say is when I did some testing, and I did try to do the testing of the 12 volt, all these 12 volt pixels, not the 5 volt, they're their own thing. But when I was testing these 5 volt pixels, if I ran more than 300 of the Evos, I started to get flickering. If I ran more than a 20 foot extension, I started to get flickering. If, um, in fact, when I, when I, at one point, I'm not sure if it was when I had more pixels or a longer extension, but just like these 12 volts, they also got stuck on all white. So they have the same sort of failures that standard 12 volt pixels have. But here's the other downside. They also have similar failures of five volt pixels because these need that 12 volt pixels. As the 12 volt starts to dip, it doesn't have the voltage needed to actually send the correct signal and get the correct color at the end of the strand. So if you're not adding that power balancing, your colors are gonna to start to dip as you go down, down the line because it's taking voltage. Now, one other thing to notice about, to take note, I should say, about current draw is most of these take about 0.6 amps per pixel. That's assuming that it's at 100% white and it's uh, full white. These pixels are different. They take a lot less, so you should be able to run way more pixels per power supply but what you need to factor in is it's a current, it's a constant current. So if these pixels are powered up but turned off, they're taking current. If all the other pixels are powered up but turned off, they're taking very, very minimal current. They're, they're effectively taking no current because the, the, the components are not. These actually do take their current. So there have been some reports that any, basically anywhere between 50 and 100% brightness, and if they're turned off, they're going to take the exact same amount of, of current. And that if you go lower than 50% brightness, they're still going to be taking a little less, but nominally less amperage than, um, than at 100%. So it's something to take note of that these have a current, a constant current draw. And one of the arguments that you always hear about 12 volt pixels is you can run more pixels per PSU because they're not always on, they're not always drawing that full current. When you're planning your show with Evos, you're gonna to have to plan around them as if they're at 100%, 100% of the time. So although they take less current, you have to assume that it's always taking that current with these pixels. So that's those pixels in a nutshell. Now these are the 8208s. Now the great thing about these pixels is if pixel number two on this string fails, you've got one pixel failure. The rest of the 99 are still gonna work. On, on all of these, because they've got one data line, if pixel number two fails, you've got 99 pixels that aren't gonna work. They're not gonna work right because it, it expects all the data to be sent from pixel number two along the chain. So that is a huge advantage that these have. These are also native 12 volt. Um, 
One disadvantage that I had with these, when I plugged them in, I first tested with 300, pix 300 pixels. And immediately when I plugged them in, I thought, oh no, I've got a bad pixel. Because one of them over a pixel roughly 280, it was the wrong color. And I thought, oh, brand new pixels, one is bad. First out of the bag, one is bad. But then I rearranged them and the pixel that I thought was bad, displaying the wrong color, it actually moved. So it's still right around pixel 280. These also have a little bit of a startup sequence. I think it has to do with the backup data. I'm not entirely sure. And I noticed that the longer the extension cord, much over 25 feet, it started to have problems. And anything with more than 200 pixels, it was doing the flickering and it was displaying some odd colors. So, um, Mo volts, Mo beta is not necessarily the truth because what people love about the more volts in these 12 volt pixels is because they're not native 12 volt pixels. It's because they have a much higher tolerance for that voltage drop that these pixels aren't going to have. So in many ways, not, not entirely the same, but in many ways, these are actually more alike than these 12 volt pixels. So it's not necessarily Mo volts, Mo beta. It's, um, you're gonna have to think about how you're gonna power inject or power balance with with the uh, 8208s or the duos, whatever you want to call them, and with the Evos. And again, with Charlie's props, it makes it a lot easier because pixel one and the last pixel are really close to one another, or we've got really high dense props, and so you end up with really, really short Ts. Um, but it's something you're gonna have to think about with both of these sets. So again, on these 8208s, um, the huge advantage that they have is that they're gonna be able to continue to send data even if one pixel goes bad. Um, the downside is it seems that without doing additional power balancing or possibly an F amp, which, which I have not tested with, I was trying to make these tests simple. I plan to do another video where I hook these up to a controller and you get to see, but effectively 200 pixels is sort of the max before you need to start doing something else, whether it's adding some injection tees or doing something different. And the, the brightness didn't seem to have a huge impact on being able to run more pixels like they can with 12 volt. So I hope you found this in, this information interesting. I hope you found it helpful. Again, none of these are better than the other ones. These are sort of newcomers. Time will tell how well they hold up. I think they'll, they'll all probably do just fine. You'll hear some people gripe, some people uh, raving how great they are, but all of them have their advantages. All of them have their disadvantages. I hope you found this information and it helps you with your show. As always, check out Charlie's Props and have a great day.